If this is the roster of the Toronto Maple Leafs on day one of the NHL regular season, if it's October 13th and we're sitting here and this is their roster, are you guys happy with that? What do you think of it? Is, well, let's, is Hosang the roster or not? Uh, let's say Let Hosang played well and he's their um, like depth forward. He's probably scratched. He might be first night. line, Jesse. Like they, okay, no. They, no. <laughs> no. Well, might be first line. They were saying that. It, it, these are this... the guys you have to play with. And let's say Hosang is your extra skater. He's scratched and he's a healthy scratch. To make this infinitely easier, I'm going to say Hosang doesn't make the team. Yeah. Um, so, okay. What do you Matthews guys think Marner. of Marner? Matthews Marner, that's easy. Tavares Nylander, that's easy. Uh, Simmons will be on the team. Kerfoot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got to think Robertson probably plays at least the first 10 games. Yeah. Although they're saying, oh, well, he needs another year in the AHL. I'm like, they don't prob they probably don't have a choice. Yeah, He's put him in got to play with the Leafs. He's got to play. He's on the left side, probably on line two or three. Mm -hmm. Oh, baby. One uh, thing will be first line. They're already saying that. Probably, yeah. There you go. Put him in there. Oh boy, I'm really struggling here. You know what? I, Jesus, I think you're right. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm not having fun. I'm not having a good time right now. So I have Bunting, Matthews, Marner, Kerfoot, mm -hmm. Nylander, or sorry, Kerfoot, Tavares, Nylander. Mm -hmm. I have Kerfoot on left wing. They're they're so thin. And then what do you do? There's McKay, and then you do. Engvall, Brooks, Simmons? It's, no, that's a fourth line. That's Kampf? not good enough. Kampf? They can't score. Well, no. That line can't score. Well, neither can Kampf, though. This is what I'm saying, man. If defense wasn't the issue last year, then go get some depth scoring and use the defenseman that's got value to do it. You got to you gotta trade Engvall or bury that deal. All right. And I it, think I think you need to strongly six, consider trading even Mikheyev. The possibly. six forwards you have left are Brooks, Engvall, Engvall, uh, Mikheyev, Simmons, Spezza, and a missing one. And Kampf. Come on, come on. So there's six. Okay, Simmons. Sorry, Spezza I don't hate as the fourth line center. Mm -hmm. um, Kampf I don't hate as the third line center. Spezza is going to be wing. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I think at this point in his career, Listen, he's probably. His I, I don't think you hate a roster with a hundred point right winger and a 50 goal scoring center. Yep. And despite everybody being extremely down on John Tavares, uh, which I still don't understand because the it's, guys play, he's a point of game player and he can play defensively too. Like he's responsible defensively. I don't, I don't get the, the hate on for Tavares at all. Um, I don't think you hate any of the players on the team. Maybe you don't love the contracts, but Here's what I don't like. I don't like how centered on four guys this entire team's fortunes are. I agree with that. Here, let me take my best stab at this, okay? Mm -hmm. Bunting, Matthews, Marner. Mm -hmm. No combination of anybody is going to look bad with those two. Mm -hmm. right? no. Kerfoot, Tavares, Nylander. We know it works. We've so mm -hmm. hate it. That's I'll a good it. line. The third line I threw together is Mikheyev, Kampf, Simmons. Okay, pain in the ass. Yeah, you, you hate playing them. Can't, it, it, not a really a threat on offense, but it's okay. A non-option on offense, but and then the fourth line is an all-offensive fourth line and a bunch of fun, and you can use them throughout the lineup and potentially on the power play if you need an adjustment. I have Robertson, Brooks, Spezza. Oh, I like that. It's a fun line. It's mm -hmm. a fun line. Yeah, and that's, I know what, that's good. It, if you yeah. line match with another team's fourth line, they're going to beat them. Yeah. I I would – I'll take that line. I'll take mm -hmm. that. Spencer had 30 points last year. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll take that line. And, and who I'm knows first. what Robertson can be. Like, he can he can be a first-line star. He can be that fourth-line guy that we need, energy guy. Who knows? And we'll find that out, you know? He's, he's earned him, a shot. He's earned a shot. Last year was such a fragmented season because of injury. He did well enough in the AHL. We know he's a soldier. He's earned a shot. He should make this team out of camp. Okay. Okay. So that's good. I look at that team and I say, you're probably behind Tampa and oh, yeah. Florida and may, probably Montreal at this Ooh, point. I don't still. know about Montreal. We'll see. Ooh, I don't know about that roster now. They don't have they, any centers left. I have them as a playoff team, the, the Leafs, at least. Well, and know, they lost the division. They lost Bogosian on defense. And I like Bogosian, but like, if you're going to lose one guy, 
I mean, it's really, it's not that bad. You can still make a move with Dermot or you can keep him or mm-hmm. it's the least of my worries. Sandine and Lilligren are also going to get their shots this year. They have 100%. to. hundred percent. They have to. hundred percent. It's time for those guys to step up. Um, but I, I think when you, when you look at, so you think, yeah, Jesse did complete that Panthers, lightning, Boston, lots. Oh, yeah. 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 And then Montreal finished 18th this year. Then they lost to no. Yeah. I'm, and they're not, and Carey price may not play and Shea Weber, you know, I mean, I, I know they got Savard, but so that's good. Yeah. So we'll rank the Leafs ahead of Montreal for this. I think so. I think so. so we have them coming in fourth ahead of Montreal, Ottawa, who looks surprisingly could be sneaky good, mm-hmm. uh, Detroit and Buffalo. Uh, how could you rank the Leafs above Montreal? Uh, to answer your question, Habs fans, for all the reasons that you said yourselves out loud before the playoffs even began. Yeah. Uh, like, let's let's be honest. Let's have an honest conversation here. Um, it's not the greatest. It's okay. It could make the playoffs. I think Engvall's probably got to go. There is a little bit of wiggle room here, so that's okay. Florida also didn't necessarily get better, I don't think, in the last. The Carter Verhage contract was a shockingly big amount of money. Yeah. A they... year before it needed to be signed. Here's the thing about bets. You usually don't hit on all of them. <laughs> and the Panthers went, Bennett. He was small sample size, but Bennett. Montour, we know you were, weren't very good before you joined us, but Montour and Verhage, we know you barely played in the NHL before you played with us, but Verhage, they really, really slammed some money down. Uh, big bets, Bill Zito didn't do anything with subtlety. And Ver, Verhage is interesting because he's, he's a year out from being a free agent. Like he makes a million dollars this year, and then that extension will kick in. Although, according to Cap, really? it's not totally confirmed yet. Yeah, Bennett or not Bennett too? Did Bennett do the same thing? No, Bennett was a free agent. Um, uh, Braden Point did. Braden Point did well. Duh. Um, I think I, I don't hate the Leafs lineup, but I yeah. my question is this: Are they better? No. No. I like the goaltending situation a lot better. Uh, for mm. anybody that thinks uh, that. Uh, that the that like the Carolina contract with Freddie Anderson, that's a bet. Like I have to be honest, and this doesn't make me happy because I loved cheering for Freddie Anderson and like, Vezina quality for three years here in Toronto. Um, he was unplayable. They could not put him in in the in the in the playoffs at all. He was unplayable at the AHL level before the playoffs because of these injuries, and I I am shocked that they would sign him to that kind of money in that kind of term. But we'll here's, get to the, here's the honest. The oh, we'll get to the Canes. We can go to the Canes. Do you want to go to the Canes? I want to go to the Canes. Yeah, to we Canes. should. We should wrap up the Leafs. Okay. Okay. Let's wrap up. Let's yeah. wrap up. So the their Leafs goalie situation is, is an improvement over last season. Yeah, but they if, if ended last season. healthy. Yeah. yeah, where they ended last season was uh, Campbell and essentially Riddich because you couldn't really play Anderson. Yeah, mm-hmm. there were so few non. Um, there were so few options where there was no injury concern. Even Allmark, mm-hmm. you know, was hurt last year. Goalies get hurt, man. Mm-hmm. Goalies get hurt. And by the end of the year next year, the Bruins could have theoretically have a depth chart of um, Allmark and Swayman and Rask. <laughs> yeah, he could sign a contract with the midseason after he recovers mm-hmm. from surgery, which is something I'm pretty sure I predicted months ago. And they should could happen. Wait, yeah, yeah around that, February yeah. he should be uh, getting ready to go. Totally. Yeah. And if you're Boston, why wouldn't you do that? That's spectacular. Yeah. Um, um, defense, but, they're the same, pretty much, right? Yeah. Minus Bogosian, yeah. But yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, forward, Hyman's going to – the, the Hyman loss is big. But I – okay, so here's, here's a question that I have, and I was thinking about this with Zach Hyman. You know when you're in a group project and there's that one person that works really, really hard? And you're like, I want, I could work hard, but this person's going to do the work anyway. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then you, you are the next group project. That person's in a different group for seven years with a no movement clause. Um, and you realize that there's nobody around that's going to do the hard work. And you know that you're capable of doing the hard work. And, you know, also having the great attitude too, and being a good person. Um, 
I wonder if Zach Hyman not being there will force something out of some of the players. And I know this seems like backwards logic, but I wonder if him not being there forces them to push it even harder. And I know that sounds I like, odd. I like your thinking. I Do like you? positivity. I, Oh, I, I love positivity, <laughs> but I'm sorry. If a do or die game seven can't force it out of you, nothing will. Okay. Uh, well, I'm, I'm hoping that I, uh, listen, do I, I, I'm sure in, as much as I don't agree with this, this tack that Dubas is taking, I want him to be right. I want to be, right. I want to get dunked on at the end of next season. I want the Leafs have lower expectations now than they have in the entire Dubas era, by the way. Oh yeah. He's easily like, no, like the pressure's off now. People are like, oh, okay, we've, we've seen this movie. Here's, here's the problem with the Leafs looking better heading into the playoffs. They looked fantastic. And our eyes lied. <laughs> our eyes lied, man. Like, did our it, eyes lie or did they let themselves down? That right. one. And they, it only lied for three games. It was for the first four games that they didn't lie. We saw exactly the team we saw in the regular season. And not even all of the three games. No, in, in game, what was it, five? Just they, the most important chunks of three games. They could have won that one too. But. <laughs> ah! Uh, just, we don't need to rehash that. It's like when you're in, again back in high school. You start the you start the semester on a tear in a particular class, and then you just stop doing your homework, and you're like, ah, I might get a seventy out of this. Yeah, um, when you start doing the calculations about okay, so the last three exams are worth thirty five percent of my grade. So even if I failed those, I would still pass the class. So I'm gonna yeah. get like a sixty on those, and I'll still end with like yeah. a seventy five. I'll be absent for the exam. Who gives a shit? <laughs> yeah, the worst. In fact, worst. Even worst if I show up and get twenty percent, it's okay. Yeah. Worst yeah. feeling as a student is struggling in math and trying to calculate what your math mark is. Mm. I did it a lot and I was just like, I can't do this because I suck at math. Do I suck at math bad enough to fail? I'll never know. Um, Listen, we've been negative about the Leafs because they deserve it. I don't hate the lineup as it stands right now. I didn't have high expectations about this day, but I have serious questions. And serious reservations. And really, at the end of the day, it isn't about the guys they're bringing in. I know what Peter Morazic is. Detroit fans know. Carolina fans know. We know what Peter Morazic is. Good goalie. We know the, the rest of the guys are, the, it's guy. Guy, 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 guy. Right? Good for Josh Hosang. Hopefully, he makes the team. That'd be great. What I am most questioning this offseason is the core four. I, and in fact, it's really two of the core four. Well, you William can't Nylander, ask for better. William Nylander has always been William Nylander. Yeah. He is cons- the only year he wasn't William Nylander was the year that he missed training camp in half the season when he signed the contract. Tavares, hot start, wicked, or sorry, bad start, wicked finish. Wicked finish. And frankly, pretty consistent in his, in his years with the Leafs. Um, Matthews, Matthews and Marner were spectacular in the regular season. Like you... We again, we can't evaluate until uh, next spring. It's the worst feeling. It's the worst feeling. Capitals fans, I need you to talk me through this and explain how I cope. <laughs> You're the only ones I think we can rely on. Hey, Capitals, that's not fair basically. to Capitals fans. The Capitals won playoff rounds. Yeah, but it was they ran into the same black and yellow team every year. And it ruined their good time. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> Except we've decided to spice it up and throw the blue jackets and Habs in there. And yeah. Oh man. But Adam, the the reason you question two of the core four is because they have contracts that are outpaying their performances. If they were no. paid less at the on the cap, they would be perfectly fine because well, our expectations would be lower because they wouldn't be making this amount of money. To be oddly specific about that, Jesse, um, during the regular season, both of them live up to their contracts. 100%. Like Matthews won the Rocket. Like, what do you yep. expect? 11 and a half million bucks? Yeah, I expect you to win the Rocket. That's pretty great or be pretty close. And he had a special year. And it's such a fucking shame. Like, you know, it's such, a, it's such an allegory for what being a Leaf fan is. Matthews scores four goals in his first game as a Leaf, and they fucking lose in overtime. That's being a Leaf fan. Matthews wins the Rocket Richard. It's the first time a Leaf has has led the league in goals since the fucking 1940s. It's like World War II. And no one's talking about it. 
And so, and then because of what the playoffs were, and I think, so I would say they earned every cent in the, in, in the, uh, in the regular season. It's Marner just, was fourth in scoring overall in the, like, what do you expect? That, that's really good. I and think I defended that's good him, value. Defended him every step of the way. Oh, well, he's being paid like a superstar. I, look, look at the numbers. Is that, that's what a superstar does. What are you yeah. talking about? But, but that superstar I, I'm sorry, shows this, up in the playoffs, man. And Steve, you're right. I think, and Jesse, I think you're right. The super and superstar stands for playoffs. Mm-hmm. That's what makes you a superstar. And Brain Matthews and Marner, a superstar. Yeah, superstar wins big in tough moments. Um, you know, you see what what the Bucks did and Giannis did. Uh, uh, you know, recently with the finals, right? Pushed and pushed and pushed and you know ran into this team, ran into that team. What's up, Steve? But until he did it, he was a bum. And Budenholzer was a bum. And you know, yeah. everything about the Bucks was sort of leafy. I think the best basketball analogy is probably the 76ers. You know, the young, hot talent, and pff, they completely disappear in the playoffs. But that was the Bucks. Well, the Milwaukee Until it Bucks. Wasn't. The, the, Mil- Bucks. the Milwaukee Bucks were a Kevin Durant half shoe size away from being eliminated Lost. in the semifinals. Lost. Yeah. Literally, his toe was on the line. His shot was a two instead of a three. And then they ended up winning that game. So there, there's a certain amount of luck that has to go into you winning uh, professional sports playoff games. Like, you need that luck. But also get into the position where you lose the game on luck or you win it on luck instead of uh, you collapsing. How right. about the Leafs erased a three goal uh, deficit in game five? They could have won the first round in five games, and Alexander Galchenyuk gives the puck away. You know, so they did get to that position. They blew it. They were on the wrong side of the toe. Right. So I think, okay. This is a very long bow. Here's the bow. We're just not going to know, and we need to do our best to enjoy the next till April. <laughs> we we got to do our best.